Hi, this is Matt Donegan of Business Spotlight. I'm here with Otso. Otso, can you tell us who you are, what you do, and how long you've been doing it for, please? Yes, uh, name is Otso Lahtinen. I'm from Finland. I'm chief executive of a company called GeoBear, and I've been doing that that position 10 years now. And with GeoBear, I've been with uh, for 23. Wow. 23 years and um how long have you been you've been in the ceo position for 10 years the business yep. for 23 where do you trade we trade in uh, uk is our main market uk ireland we trade in finland sweden poland got a jv in baltic states and startup uh, in china and, and us and now the mo most latest here in the united arab emirates okay wow so what is it exactly that the business does? In in plain terms, we fix subsidence. Yes. So we stabilize buildings and infrastructure. That, that's a very familiar term for most UK li listeners. Yes, it, cer it certainly is. It certainly is. And and is that um, commercial and domestic? Yes. So so it's it's literally from a corner of a house to a could be a runaway at the airport and everything in between. Just a, one one caveat that low rise buildings, not no no high rises that have been piled. Although there there might be applications to them if there is infrastructure around them. That thinking or we may, we may we are able to facilitate certain piling techniques, but uh, as 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 a general rule, low rise buildings. Right. Okay. So what makes uh, Geo Bear stand out in the industry? So uh, I think the. the Customer feedback. I, I, I would, I, I can obviously blow our own horn on, on that. But if you ask our customers, they choose uh, predominantly us because it's a quicker way to um, improve ground and mitigate glacier linkage and build, fill voids and, and re-level structures than than many of the conventional alternatives. And and then if if you've got a more like for like competitor out there, the Typically, the reason that they they choose us is is because we provide an uh, let's say long, long term insurance back guarantee, right. and um, we've got BBA certification and right. and British Board of Agreements and 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 the um, probably people see us as a safe pair of hands because of the trading history that we have as a as an organization for we forty this year so there's been a lot lot, lot of uh, work done in this sector. Wow. Okay. And um, with regards to the, the the challenges that the business has, um, what's the what are the what are the ways that the the business is is confronting any of the challenges that it has at the moment? What what are the challenges for you guys? Um. So obviously, um, what what's the it's it's a it's a pretty it's 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 an it's a pretty good industry to be in at this moment because firstly repair construction is 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 generally um quite resilient even during economic turmoil and this is a sub segment underneath repair uh, yeah. which uh, is 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 considered a necessary service so so it's been sort of the if if one segment dips like we had aviation dip during covid then something else is more more buoyant and so we 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 rarely get too much in, in impacted by the economic circles which i'm very very grateful uh, great, grateful for the, the other maybe flip side of that stability is that the buyers are tend to be in especially certain parts of the market very conservative and so it takes a can take a long time to make your name and convince that this new way of doing things, which even though we've been advocating for 40 years is, believe it or not, still very often considered new, um, mm -hmm. is the way to do, do things. So, so that's probably a big big challenge that anybody faces that is, is uh, attempting to disrupt disrupt construction and civil engineering, that it you have to be patient with it. So, so GeoBear Geo has been doing it for 23 years. You've been doing the, or, or was it 40 years? Is that right? Or the company companies. Uh, so we used to be called Eurotech, and, right. and it started in Finland in '83. So it's it's uh, the the whole history is 40 years. So you've been doing it for 40 years, yet you're still considered a disruptor in the marketplace. Does that say something about how fast the construction industry works? 
I, I think it, it it has to do do with that and and also the I, the, the it has to do with that and because we, we deal with specifiers uh, a lot and and different different clients so uh, design consultants surveyors and things who who um specify work for others and uh, and and they there there are certain um sectors and and countries where they are very localized so so you don't if you talk to you know ra rail engineers in in Poland they are, they don't want to they are not interested in what road engineers do in in, in Poland so, right. so so they want they want local local rail examples from Poland and Polish road engineers want local road examples from Poland so right. so it's just that's the I think that's the sort of a way of thinking and the localized nature it's a very trust and risk driven business so we we, we have we any contracting business trades with risk and and it's about who you can trust on and there is a lot more people that you can't trust on out there that, that you can can trust on. so people like to buy from people that they know i think this is universal but it's, it just gets really highlighted in, in construction and and so for that for that reason it's quite entrenched can be so it can appear that way. So it takes. So so you just need to understand and re respect and appreciate that, yeah. uh, and and get in get into it in the right way. I mean, the very essence of what you do is yeah. de-risking, isn't it? That that literally the you are de-risking the um, the risk to the building, the danger to the building that the, the building may have if you're if you're propping it up, um, and you're providing something which isn't the standard solution because you have a better solution in the marketplace. So it's an entire risk analysis, isn't it, for, for your customers, I would have thought. Uh, and your reputation is obviously helping you in that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's, that's correct. Okay. So what what's the future look like for, for GeoBear then? We, we are a company that wants to grow and, and we aim to continue to grow. We've got a very specific three-year plan uh, and we, we have very specific targets within it and action actions to do so and and very much implementing a growth mindset culture so we don't we 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 aim to create a culture where we don't just fix things when they are broken yeah. we 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 develop for the sake of, of of development and i know that everybody is saying that but it's it's um um it, it's really 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 a key thing for us and and do you do that by <clears throat> by setting okrs is that is that your methodology Yes, so I think we we call them KPIs, but it's the 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 I know the book that talks about uh, OKRs. So so we we have a uh, like a KPI tree. So we we start from let's say um, order intake, and we we can split it down to how many opportunities, quotes, site visits, right. um, orders. We get the conversion rates, and then then each individual in that organization can can have has relevant KPIs. For their their performance in yeah. sales, they're probably best best defined. We're doing pretty good work now in getting them to other other departments as well. Because you can't you can manage what you can measure. Yes, yeah, exactly. There's a brilliant book about that, of course, um, by John Durr. So, um, yeah. uh, so what are the main challenges that you have in the business? Uh, when when broadly speaking, when we ask businesses this, they're they're usually around either um time the, the the management of time and resource inside the business focusing on the right things at the right time team building managing developing culture recruitment or or uh or money you know it's it's how much uh, revenue has been generated and uh, profitability where, where where do your challenges lie uh, one one uh, particularly unique prop well it's not unique but it, it's probably net let's say not so common in our industry to to have because we are quite online organization so so even if even in pre-covid times we were re remote because we've got teams of two or three people going around and and doing valuable work for our clients and then we've got sales engineers who go around and specify the works and then uh, some people in the back office who support all this from from happening and this is happening in in several countries with now we are just under 150 people and when covid came we obviously reduced um traveling and reduced seeing each other in person because it wasn't necessary to the to the extent that we used to uh, but that now we we are probably 80 percent digital and 20 percent in person and that is a challenge for for leadership to keep people engaged yeah. and and we need we need to keep uh, focusing focusing on that but it's uh, one, one of the tangible ways has been to uh, just in-state hybrid that there's for those 
departments who need to meet they will they will have meetings uh, time, timely meetings and that i find it's it's been helpful to do that because then then you really make an effort to show up on those when you meet the person as well so yeah it's uh, and, and online and online also the other challenge of it besides lack of engagement is that uh, because it isn't necessarily as effective uh, in some ways of communication form because you don't see the language so much um, the uh, you need to have more of them to get the same thing done sometimes yeah. so yeah. there is more meetings in people's calendars but then the flip side is that there's less travel so yeah it's kind of yeah so that that's it. so so it, it's it's been a it's been working working uh reason but we managed to grow the company even even with with this new new setup so it's um i, I think it's not a bottleneck for our growth but it, it's an area that requires definitely attention yeah yeah okay so challenges of culture challenge cha- or maintaining yeah. culture and challenges of communication maintaining strong communication in the business okay yeah, yeah. okay that, that i mean for a business of your size that's that's to be expected and uh, and yeah, there's often a bit a big challenge inside any organization with 100, 150 staff. It's you know deep, very decent size. I think we're one hundred and forty three, but uh, it just it's easier to say. Yeah, one. yeah absolutely. So, uh, are you guys on on track for your growth goals? Yes. Simply put, yes, that's brilliant. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it, it, we, we've we've made made. made uh, we, I think we had set ten goals for this year, and and we are above uh, the target in eight of them. So it's 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 a, it's been a good year. Uh, typically, we have managed to grow most of our key metrics um, eight nine years consecutive now. So it's it's been I'm very grateful for the team team uh, for for pulling through with that. That's fantastic. That's that that's brilliant that you've achieved those. Did you put stretch goals in? Or was it deep with the goals, stretch goals, super stretch in the in the way that Google does it? Did you did you do that or? No, I th- I've I've never never really been a. I think that just ma- makes it complex. So we we try to make a. We we, we used to we used to do uh, like over aggressive budgets and 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 uh, we never made under aggressive budgets. For, I think that's <laughs> no, no one has wanted to do that. But we've gotten to the to the um, direction of of really trying to make the targets so that they are really realistic and achievable because it all starts from in our organization from from setting the targets for the people who sell and and then uh, th- those are now we have quite quite a lot of data and experience so it's quite easy to set them reasonably accurately and and then so so as provided that we we follow our management system and and then that gives us how much we think we can deliver and then the costs come you know on top of that so yeah. it's it's better and better because it's the spiral of learning so we've i think we've gotten better over the years there's still a lot of development to do but it's it's now easy to easier to do a budget that is challenging and still uh, reasonably um achievable so so we haven't really seen a need for if if we are on track of of uh, exceeding it then then we can put some additional carrots to it but usually it is still ambitious enough that it it has it it takes effort to to get to get all those all those goals done. Sounds like you guys are really disciplined and very very focused. Thank you. Yeah. So if, if uh, what's your what's the biggest lesson that you've had uh, since you've been CEO? What's the in the last few years? What's the what's the thing that? Well, has- we had a near death experience in in twenty fourteen when uh, right one year after because I was made CEO by my father in 20, 2013. and at the time um, so. I wasn't. I was what I was. Twenty four years old, and I didn't objectively deserve the position. It was. It was. I, I didn't have, let's say, qualifications. I, I had been business school for two years, and I had. I had been okay. okay I've been traveling with him and being sort of know the business very well, and and so on. But it, it was. Um, it, it was. It was one of those, and then that, of course, then comes with certain challenges with how people view you and to earn your you know trust and when you really actually don't have the competence then you need to somehow get it so i was very blessed to have with some very very good mentors but we had a near death experience uh, on the and, and by the way i'm very grateful for my father and and for his um uh, visionariness to be able to pull that off and and to 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 see that in me and keep believing during the um during all the all the let's say challenges that we had during that time and i because because I, I would um even though uh, it was painful, I wouldn't change it for anything. It was really worth more than gold as as a training 
So it was it was uh, super valuable. I wouldn't hope it on anyone. I don't want to go through it again, but uh, I, I I cherish it and I'm very grateful for that experience. So so it was a so it was a big loss. loss. Back then, our business was was largely. We were starting to become a contractor. We had we had just acquired our retiring licensee in UK and and in Sweden, and and we our main cash flow generating business was licensing intellectual property at the time. And uh, I had a mandate from the from the management or the board back then to change the licensing structure slightly because there was underperforming licensees around the world, and um, I I um, took it uh, quite literally and I took. A lot of option in it, and and we we changed a lot of the licensees, and one of those uh, changes uh, was was um, done. I can say now, in in but enough time has passed that it was it was done quite hastily and and not not with enough counsel, and it it became a very aggressive lawsuit that involved some some of the big licensees from other parts of the world, and we were a bit um, arrogant in that. I hired, I managed to hire a very qualified uh, in-house counsel and and head of life at the time so I, we kind of thought that we are a little bit untouchable um at that point and 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 so and, and that's also re, re fair what, what most of our legal advice said so it was a, it was supposed to be a case that it was like we terminate an agreement and the licensee comes back to us and says that okay it was incorrect termination you owe us 10 million and for a company that size we had we were about a 10 million company at the time so it's a pretty big yeah. uh, loss but it was supposed to be like one of those that okay ha 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 Someone, some idiot has filed this type of lawsuit that let's just not bother with it too much. And, and of course, we did then uh, start bothering once it gets longer and longer and, and things sort of one thing led to another and it sort of spiraled completely out of hand even in, before the proceedings. I think we could have um, done lots and lots of things d- differently there. And, and then we ended up losing it, uh, even though it was supposed to be theoretically a slam dunk case for us. And we lost, uh, it was an 8 million uh, damage award against the licensing company at the, at the time so it was uh, it 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 it's close to uh, bankrupted it and and uh, we um we were trying to settlement negotiate and um we had an option of either getting a voluntary settlement or uh, filing for bankruptcy or uh, filing so we then we didn't get voluntary settlement and of course bankruptcy you want to avoid as, as long as you can yes. uh, so, because that's a game over so then um, so then we 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 filed for chapter 11 in finland for that specific company which basically means that you get a court appointed administrator to your management team for a year and and uh, then you make a plan to pay those debts off with um with your cash flow going forward and 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 and, and so and then they adjust if there is need to adjust the debt levels, the court can make a decision that this company can handle this much debt. And so that we went all that through and there was attempts from our um, now former, but then then large, let's say, corporation partners to try to hostile uh, take over us during those proceedings to buy our assets with with uh, making offers and they, they joined forces with this um, plaintiff. And, and, and so... Uh, and so it was a it was a pretty tough ride, but then we managed to managed to agree on a on a payment plan and, and get a court to to um, ratify it, and and it, it went through three different stages in in court, and we paid everything, and it's done and done and uh, dusted. But the big big uh, there's many. I mean, I could speak four hours on what all the learnings were were from starting with who you partner up with and how you manage your relationships and. What to do when you performance manage and how how not to end, um, what what it's one probably one 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 big big one from it is that you you should you should always seek for um you you, know, you need to always you need to always understand this is you need to always understand what is the worst case risk before you make any decision. Yeah, and are you are you able to stomach that if it happens? And that's because that's because uh, we just refused to see that, and and there was there was like writing on the wall on many occasions, and it could have been settled fifteen different times. There there was it, it could have been avoided. It it's, it never needed to go that far. In 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 again, um, I believe that I had to go through it and, and regret any pain that anyone associated to me or the company had to go through and and did that and certainly didn't do it intentionally but in hindsight 
I wouldn't want to change that what what happened and I if I went back in time I wouldn't want to do it differently because I, I wouldn't get that experience so so because I, I believe that all these mistakes are happening for you for a reason and it's up to you if you capitalize on them or not okay. so well that that sounds like one hell of a business journey um <laughs> that's it's it's very interesting that you've talked about the risk that the business has been was put in from those decisions, bearing in mind what you provide as a service is effectively to de-risk other people's properties. So there's a certain amount of irony in that. But yeah, is that what you? If you met your 18 year old self, is that the advice that you'd give them? Is look at the end before before anything else, or what? What, what would you tell? No, them? I, I would. I wouldn't tell them anything. If I would meet myself at 80 and I would just quietly observe and and and, and green and say that uh, good luck. Do you know what? You're the first person that's ever said that to me when I've asked that question. That's that's uh, that's a really really different take on it. So so what is it? Have you got any other news that that Geo Bear or any news about any new products or services or anything that Geo Bear is doing at the moment strategically that you'd like to share? Well, we, we you you may want to if you are into the subsidence game, you may want to check out the I I struck the subsidence handbook that has just been released about a month ago. We we um got our technology uh, featured in it, so we're grateful for the steering group that took place, and we were very very uh, honored to 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 be invited to contribute to that. So that's that's a big in in the UK UK, UK scene. Okay, that's fantastic. Well, thanks for sharing that. Um, I will put that um, the link to that in the in the video description, if you like. Uh, yeah. That, that, our, that our viewers can, uh, can can view and then they can they can view that that publication. So, thank you so much for your time. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you. It's been fascinating to listen to your challenges, particularly of the uh, of the legal. Um, situation that you've managed to get past and, and you've grown and you've grown into the CEO that you are today. So thank you so much for time. Uh, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you and I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you very much for the opportunity to appear on your podcast. Uh, absolute pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.